Welcome to another edition of Cancer Facts with Dr. B. Today's question is, how are the side effects of prostate cancer treatments reported? In order to evaluate the different treatment options, I encourage patients to use the Care About Me principles outlined in a previous video. A stands for adverse events or side effects. Several treatment options lead to the same overall survival and prostate cancer specific survival. So the two most important factors will be the cancer control rate of each option and the side effects from each of the treatment options. Fortunately, we have several papers that report not only doctor-reported outcomes, but also patient-reported outcomes. If you have prostate cancer and you are considering a specific treatment, your doctor should be able to hand you an article that will cover the side effects related to that particular treatment. In order to evaluate the information, it is important to take into account these considerations. For example, if a paper only reports the side effects before the treatment and at six months, it may miss side effects that may be pretty severe but only last for three months after the treatment. Typically, new side effects do not appear after five to eight years from the treatment. The most notable exception is cancer that is caused by radiation. In this situation, it is important to have at least 15 years of follow-up to evaluate this side effect. Baseline function is also very important. In the past, most patients that received radiation were not good surgical candidates because of their age or certain medical problems. Sometimes a form of treatment may look like it results in worse side effects, but it is important to consider the baseline function, the age of the patient, and the other medical problems of the patient when comparing these side effects. There are two general ways side effects are reported, doctor-reported outcomes and patient-reported outcomes. The best, of course, is to report both. However, there can be bias. For example, if the doctor is asking the questions, patients will typically underreport the side effects because they don't want to offend the doctor who delivered the treatment. This is, this is called response bias. Another form of bias can be choice supportive bias or duration neglect. Doctor reported outcomes are typically reported using the CTC. AE, or the Common Terminology Criteria for Adverse Events, version 5. This is a product of the National Cancer Institute, and it typically reports side effects as mild, moderate, severe, life-threatening, or leading to death. Another popular form is the RTOG-ECOG form. Here are some of the patient-reported outcomes in the literature. I typically use the IPSS form and the SHIM form. These forms look at urinary bother symptoms and sexual function. However, there are multiple forms that have been used in the prostate cancer literature. The forms will typically ask questions about urinary bother symptoms such as hesitancy, straining, urgency, urge incontinence, incontinence during sleep, frequency or nocturia. It'll ask sexual problems of impotence, problems with orgasm or ejaculation. It'll ask hormonal questions such as hot flashes, depression, or lack of energy. And it'll ask bowel problems such as frequency of bowel movements, blood in the stool, pain with bowel movements, or fecal incontinence. The second half of this talk is to show some of the questionnaires, and I will also give examples of articles reporting the side effects. So you can end here or keep watching. But remember, your doctor should be able to hand you one of these articles in order for you to evaluate the side effects of the treatment that is being recommended. The PROTECT trial was published in the New England Journal of Medicine in October of 2016. It used these patient-reported outcomes to report the side effects comparing a prostatectomy to conventionally fractionated radiation therapy to active surveillance. It has been argued that over time, both the radical prostatectomy and conventionally fractionated radiation therapy have improved in terms of their outcomes and their side effect profile. The CSERS trial addresses these, this contemporary group and uses patients that were and evaluates patients that have been treated in the past 10 years using the EPIC-26 form and the SF-36 form. The PACE-B trial looks at different forms of radiation evaluating the side effect profiles of each form of treatment using the EPIC-26 form, 
the FASI Fecal Incontinence Score, the IPSS form, and the International Index of Erectile Function 5 question form. Here is the EPIC-26 form, or the Expanded Prostate Cancer Index Composite Short Form. There are different versions of the EPIC questionnaire, and some are longer than others, but as the questionnaire becomes longer, it's more difficult for patients to be compliant filling out the form. As you can see, this form asks about urinary incontinence problems, urinary bother symptoms, bowel problems, erectile function, and overall quality of life problems that may be seen with uh, hormonal therapy. Here is the example of the International Prostate Symptom Score. Instead of grading it, the patient is asked how often the event happens. And you can see it asks about incomplete emptying, frequency, intermittency, urgency, weak stream, straining, or how many times you get up at night. It will also ask a quality of life question, meaning are you delighted with the treatment or do you feel terrible after the treatment? So typically patients with scores of 20 to 35 have what we consider severe symptoms uh, versus 8 to 19, which would be moderate symptoms. So it's very easy for the patient to fill out this form before treatment and at different durations throughout the treatment and after treatment and follow-up. Here is the Sexual Health Inventory for Men, or SHIM form. It asks about the ability to have an erection and maintain an erection, and it will also uh, ask about satisfactory rates. A perfect score is 25, so mild erectile dysfunction would be 17 to 21 and it goes down from there. The next example is a paper published by Dr. Robert Meyer in the International Journal of Radiation Oncology, Biology, and Physics. It included 309 patients treated at 21 uh, centers that were both academic and community-based. They used the CTCA uh, for adverse events version number three to report their side effects. They reported their side effects in a table form and they divided the table into acute side effects or late side effects. They also divided it into urinary side effects, gastrointestinal side effects, or other events such as fatigue. And then they used the CTCA grading system, grading from one to five. I typically tell patients that a grade one side effect is something that they would mention, but won't necessarily need treatment for. A grade two side effect is something they may want treatment for. And a grade 3 or 4 toxicity is something they would definitely need treatment for, whereas grade 5 toxicities uh, will cause will lead to death. In this study, you could see 59% of uh, men developed grade 1 urinary side effects, mostly frequency and or urgency. And 16% developed grade 2 side effects, but nobody developed grade 3, 4, or 5 within the first three months. After three months for the urinary side effects, you could see that the number of grade 1 side effects decreased to 28% and the number of grade 2 side effects dropped to 12% and only 1.3% of men developed a grade 3 side effect which typically was urinary retention that required a catheter or seeing blood in the urine. For the gastrointestinal side effects, again 55% had a grade 1 side effect which could be related to the bowel prep but only 8.1% had a grade 2 side effect and nobody had a grade 3, 4, or 5. In terms of late side effects, only 12% had grade 1 side, effect, side effects, which would be again frequency, but only 2% had a grade 2 side effect. In this trial, nobody had the space OAR gel, and also most of the men recovered from their fatigue within 2 to 4 weeks after treatment. The next trial I'll present is called the ASCEND RT trial. This enrolled 398 men and randomized them to the standard arm, which included androgen deprivation therapy plus pelvic radiation to 46 gray, followed by dose escalated external beam radiation therapy to 78 gray, or to an experimental arm that substituted a low dose rate prostate brachytherapy boost. This trial found that at five years, the cumulative incidence of a grade 3 GU side effect was 18.4% using low-dose rate brachytherapy 
versus only 5.2% for using dose-escalated external beam radiation therapy. This trial used what is called the Lent Soma Late Effects of Normal Tissue Somatic Objective Management Analytic a grading system to grade both GU and GI side effects. On this table, you could see that the low dose rate brachytherapy arm had worse side effects compared to the dose escalated external beam arm. 30% of uh, men had grade 2 urinary side effects versus 16%, and 2.5% had grade 3 side effects versus 0.5%. Here is the linear graph form and the bar graph form for their reporting of urinary and GI toxicity. You can clearly see that the low dose rate brachytherapy arm had more GU morbidity compared to the dose escalated external beam radiation therapy arm in this trial. The next example is what's called the CSERS trial. It's to understand adverse events of contemporary treatment approaches for men with favorable risk and unfavorable risk localized prostate cancer. This paper documents the patient reported outcomes for men undergoing active surveillance, nerve sparing prostatectomy, external beam radiation therapy, or low dose rate brachytherapy with some of the men receiving androgen deprivation therapy. This trial reported their results in tabular form in the supplement, but also used graphs such as these or what are called radar plots such as these. And as you could see, an example is for urinary incontinence, you would expect that surgery would have a worse outcome. And you can see on the curve, there's a certain drop in continence rates, but then it does tend to get better, uh, but then starts to curve down over time. Whereas bowel function is very similar between the groups. And for sexual function, surgery has an initial dip, but ultimately external beam radiation therapy causes more erectile dysfunction than the surgery group. The radar plots are not so intuitive, uh, but are used more commonly in uh, more current literature. The next paper is the PACE-B trial. It looks at intensity modulated fractionated radiation therapy and compares it to stereotactic body radiotherapy for prostate cancer in over 800 patients. The conventionally fractionated patients receive 78 gray and 39 fractions over 7 to 8 weeks, or hypofractionated radiation therapy using 62 gray and 20 fractions over 4 weeks. The SABER group received 3,625 centigray and 5 fractions over 1 to 2 weeks. In addition to the patient reported outcomes listed on the slide, they also use doctor reported outcomes such as the CTCA version 4 and the RTOG grading system. They typically reported their results using a graph form. And here is an example of the graph that is used. You can see that the side effects are pretty similar between the hypofractionated, conventionally fractionated, and stereotactic ablative body radiotherapy. The conventionally fractionated arm typically had longer durations of side effects because of the longer treatments that were used. Here is an article that was just published online last week. It looks at the five-year outcomes in a prospective uh, group receiving external beam radiation therapy with or without low-dose rate brachytherapy as a boost. This paper will also use a tabular form as well as a graph form to look at the side effects. And you can see here the external beam radiation therapy with the low dose rate brachytherapy as a boost typically had the largest drop in urinary irritative sy symptoms, but most of the rest of the symptoms were pretty similar except for physical functioning where external beam radiation therapy was worse. The other nice thing about this paper is that it looks at the baseline function compared to the function at six months one year, three years, and five years. So for moderate to big problems, men in the external beam plus low dose rate brachytherapy boost, 6% had baseline moderate or big problems compared to 12% of the men in the external beam radiation therapy group. But over time, you can see in the external beam radiation therapy group, the numbers got slightly better, whereas in the low dose rate brachytherapy group, 
they typically got worse, especially at six months. They never actually returned to baseline in the low-dose rate brachytherapy boost arm, even out to five years. For bowel problems, uh, men that have a moderate or big problem, you could see that 0 to 1% had blood in their stool at the beginning, and 0 to 1% had blood in their stool after five years. In terms of bowel urgency, um, that number was 3 and 4% at baseline, which increased all the way up to 10% at six months, but dropped back down to 6% in the low-dose rate brachytherapy arm and 8% in the external beam radiation therapy arm.